have you ever had one of those pages in your art journal that well you just don't like how it turned out if you have then here are some ideas on what to do with it now i'm going to redo this page in fact spoiler alert i'm going to redo this page a couple of times and if you enjoy watching then don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell too for more weekly art tips tricks and inspiration now my page is one that I did a while ago and you know what? I have never really liked it. I mean, it isn't awful. I've done worse, <laughs> but I didn't have a lot of time to do this one and I had to include some very specific products in it, like the stamps and the die cuts that you see. And it just kind of never really worked for me. And at the time, because I ran out of time, I just kind of had to go with it. It happens, not everything you do is a success, but you learn from it and now I am free to do anything I like with this page. So I think it's time to give it a makeover. And if you have a page like this in your journal that you want to start afresh, a really good way to do it is to, well, just cover it up <laughs> and start from a blank page. Obviously there's texture on this page with those die cuts, so it won't be a completely fresh start. To cover my page, I'm using some paint on my palette that's left over from my October Process Addicts video for my patrons. Big wave, lovely patrons. Did you recognize the colors here on my palette? So I went from painting that printed bird page for you guys to painting this. And that bird page is over on my Patreon page. And there's a link to that in the description so that if you haven't joined me over there, you can do. And of course you'll find all the supplies that I'm using today in the description as well, including the colours I'm using. It's a little random the way I'm adding the colour. I have no real aim other than to cover the page up and use up that spare paint. And I'm not drying the different colours, just working them into one another as I go. And it does seem random because <laughs> I am just hoping that by working on the page I'll kickstart some ideas for what I want to do with it. And this is something you can try too. Add paint to the page you aren't happy with and just don't overthink it, just do. And hopefully this will lead to something intuitive or perhaps a plan for the page. It doesn't really matter which way you go with it. What matters is that you're doing it and you're getting rid of something that doesn't work for you rather than just letting it sit in your journal annoying you. Okay, so there is a case for leaving some of the pages in your journal or the projects that you do that you don't like or that failed for you. And that case is when those pages still help you to learn where it didn't happen and what you would do differently next time. Don't cover those pages up. You don't need to cover everything that you don't like up or redo them. Some of them are really helpful to you. Plus, you want to have a record of your artistic progression, how your skills, your style, techniques all changed over time as well. You don't want to completely wipe out your history, that wouldn't be good. But there are occasions, like pages like this, where I truly i am getting nothing from it anymore, so it needs to go. And after using my leftover paint and adding a bit of collage texture and even some more paint after that, I decide to try one of my doodle designs to see if that's going to work here. Those circle die cuts seem to ask for more circles, so more circles I give them. And for you lovely creatives who have been following me on Instagram, you have seen this a very similar pattern to this one over there, but done with pen. So much like last week's video where I let my Inktober doodles inspire that piece, I thought I would dip into that catalogue of doodles again for this piece. But I stopped and left the page here. Oh no, this page is just doomed to not work. I didn't like where it was going. I look at it now whilst I'm doing this voiceover and I'm thinking, well, you know, I can see some potential with the design, but at the time I just, it wasn't happening for me. So I down tools and left it until the next day. I was also losing the light with filming anyway. So, you know, time to quit. When I came back to it the next day, it was still angsting me. <laughs> so I covered it up again, this time with white paint. And that's when I realised that the only way that this page was going to work for me was if I worked with those die cuts and stopped fighting them. I was going to need to keep them as a major feature on this page. 
I know it might seem pretty obvious watching this now but at the time I was so determined to cover them up and just have them as texture that I could not see the die cuts for the paper or something. So bear this in mind when you're doing your page redos. If you have a design feature on there that's pretty dominant then you may have to keep them as that dominant feature. And you can recolor them and do different things to them, nothing to stop you doing that. But you may not be able to hide them and you may just have to go with them. So, art journal page take three. I decided to add a little watercolor and I chose some gelatos to do this because basically they were right next to my filming desk and it also meant that I could roughly scribble over the surface and over that texture and then just add a little bit of water on top to do some drips and dribbles as well. And any water reactive crayon would work for that. Now the keen eyed amongst you might spot that my hands have gone from being really clean <laughs> to splattered with ink and 100 points to the first person who can tell me why. Big clue, watch last week's video, that's going to help. So whilst I was working on this video, I was also working on last week's video as well and just swapping between them whilst different paints were drying. Now once that gelato layer is dry, I then just go over some areas with paint and this time I'm letting those die cut shapes lead the way. And you know what? I feel a lot happier about how that's kind of going. making and texture that I'm adding to this page with the circles and then the mini circles of paint and then adding yet more circles. I told you this page wanted circles didn't I? It really did. <laughs> but I'm adding some more painty circles with the pen as well and that all just seems to work. And I feel like this page kind of always wanted to look like this but it took a few attempts to get it there. So the moral of this arty story is don't be afraid to do over the pages and projects that you don't like and have no more to give to you. But do leave the ones that tell your art story and you can learn from and you're still learning from. Don't fight the history of the page. If there are some dominant elements there, then you may have to just keep them as the dominant element rather than try to refocus the page and you can always redo the redo. Thanks so much for watching and feel free to share your favourite tips for redoing pages and projects and I'd love to read them in the comments below. Looking forward to our next Arty Chat. See you next time lovely artists.